Welcome to the Research Talks podcast from Stockbox with Alan Green. Alan, always a pleasure, never a chore. How are you? Mark, likewise, always a pleasure, never a chore. I'm fine, thanks. And uh, it's Friday again. It's come around again, hasn't it? It's a, it's a, the, the, the weeks today, nowadays, just seem to fly past. It comes around, doesn't it? It always comes around, hey? Yeah, but it's nice, yeah, I suppose. It's a, been a busy week for it, me. I think it's been a busy week for you as well. It's been a very busy week for me. Yeah. I, um, well, well, I think, uh, as you know, at the start, I was, uh, we, we uh, after the announcement, as the announcement by Adventure Life Group on Monday about the COVID mouthwash trial, I, I interviewed Sharon Collins, the mm. company chief commercial officer, and um, and uh, yeah, it's been a very busy week for them. It's uh, the, the the trial, I think, has has really um, it, it, it's certainly it certainly engaged investors looking for another angle on COVID, and I think certainly the uh, it captured the imagination of the uh, of the wider press as well. So yeah, yeah. It's been, been a busy week. Mm, well, I believe we're, we're going to touch on that. You're going to leave that one to the end because it's a it's a bit of a bit of an innovative uh, innovative one, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of a new entry into the COVID charts, if we can if we can sort of call it that. But uh, but certainly, yeah, th- th- there's an angle here. Uh, I, I think we're, what I'd like to do is cover Venture Life Group separately in a separate research podcast. But mm-hmm. I'm just going to refer to the trial because because it, it does give a very interesting dimension to to the battle against COVID. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so so today we're on we're on COVID two, of course. Yeah, COVID part two. Yeah, even though there was was there a second vaccine announced. Is that right? <laughs> <What's> the- <laughs> yeah, that's, the, uh, and it's interesting because the 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 impact on the COVID stocks this time around. Um, obviously, when Pfizer announced their vaccine, all the COVID stocks, uh, and it was the Monday that we released yes, it COVID was. part one. Yeah. And of course, a lot of the stocks we spoke about then literally fell off a cliff that morning, and uh, most of them have recovered some of the some of the ground mm-hmm. since. But uh, the, the the stocks we're going to talk about today. Uh, also, also fell off cliff too. But but then when the Moderna news came out, there was also uh, another corresponding fall um, during the day. But it wasn't quite as sharp. And and again, most of that ground ground has been recovered. So so it's interesting. Okay. I think investors are now getting the picture that you know this isn't just a a one hit wonder, something that can be solved at the stroke of a pen. Yeah. You know, this is something that's going to be with us for many years. So so all of these. All of the companies that we're going to talk talk about today, and talked about in the previous uh, episode, that have their own uh, means of, of of battling the disease, uh, whether it's through testing, through uh, through through treating the the the, the, the chronic uh, chronic symptoms, um, they they will all have a part to play going forward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good. So we've got four COVID stocks to talk about. Um, take yes, your pick. Which, which one would you like to to start with? Okay, well, let's start with Synergen. Mm -hmm. SNG is the epic code, and uh, Synergen's had a, well, along with most uh, COVID COVID stocks or stocks involved in COVID, it's had a a very, very uh, eventful year. Um, Currently currently, currently trading on um, uh, about... uh, uh, one pound nine pence. The the stock has a market cap of two two hundred eighteen million. Um, uh, uh, trade shares of trade as high as two fifty nine p on the year, and that's coming from a low at the start of the year around five or six p. So mm-hmm. um, you can get some idea of the sort of gains that investors have um, have seen this year. So Synergen, um, uh, and again, uh, you know. I go back to the point I've made with the other companies. The, these companies are engaged in 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 their own various areas of uh, of biotechnology and um, and uh, and research. And of course, uh, Synergian speciality has been research into respiratory uh, diseases, and mm-hmm. these of course include asthma, um, COPD, which is uh, uh, which is uh, a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, mm-hmm. uh, uh, respiratory uh, RSV, uh, and of course flu and others. Um, and the group uses a, a human that they use human in vitro models. Of course, in vitro means um, outside of the body. That's so it's in a lab environment uh, to um, uh, which uh, which are, are tested and developed and researched using in-house biobank examples. And the the company has a large biobank of tissue and human serum, which is derived both from Healthy patients and from disease patients, so they they're able from that to um, to develop biomarkers for validation and assessment uh, um, um, in in uh, when researching the, the disease. Um, so um, 
the, the company also uh, is involved in uh, ex vitro, which is, of course, in the body, um, where it's uh, where it's, uh, it uh, uses uh, uh, cultures and blood assays to identify targets. Um, and, and from the from the data that uh, that they assimilate, um, they can design and run phase one and two trials to to uh, to, to research and 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 find cures for the various conditions. So. Um, the, the the Synergian undertook a collaboration with pharmacists, pharmacists in Australia, to develop these tiny molecule inhibitors to treat uh, fibrotic fibrotic disease, which of course is one of the key underlying issues uh, with uh, with with respiratory uh, diseases. Um, so. So, so where you have um, uh, scarred lung tissue, which leads to shortness of breath, mm -hmm. dry cough, and and so on, um, these inhibitors that they're developing um, uh, are, are are designed to prevent the very the very worst uh, the very worst symptoms from developing, and obviously um, ultimately leading to death. Um, also used to treat NASH, which is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, st um, which is fatty liver disease, liver fibrosis, um, and. Uh, Back in March this year, uh, the company announced uh, on March the 18th that um, they were to use this the technology, uh, um, the the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, data and technology that they would uh, acquired to date to uh, to to trial for COVID. Um, mm. And and they 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 used that they developed um, they developed from this uh, um, uh, uh, an interferon beta um, IFNB a uh, from a naturally occurring protein in the body, uh, developing um, and developed a formulation of this to uh, treat these various diseases we've just outlined uh, for direct delivery uh, delivery to the human body via a nebulizer. And of course, nebulizers. Uh, uh, you know, I, I have uh, I have a mild, a mild asthma, so. Um, mm. I, I use nebulizers to uh, to 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 regulate and, and treat the condition. So um, so uh, using these uh, these tools, uh, they started trialing uh, with COVID. Um, in May, of course, they announced uh, full year results to December. Uh, they raised 14 million at the time um, and reported a full year loss of just under five million, as opposed to four million previously. Um, and then came that uh, great day, uh, July the 20th, when they, when Synergen announced the trial results uh, from the uh, from uh, the, the the COVID testing. Um, and they recorded that patients who received the SNG01 uh, via the nebulizer had 79% lower risk of developing severe di diseases versus mm -hmm. the those patients treated with the placebo. Um, and also those patients were more, more than twice as likely to recover from COVID-19 as those who'd received the placebo. And uh, probably one of the, one of the highest jumps ever. The uh, Synergen shares recorded a 380 percent rise that day. So mm -hmm. it was it was uh, the, the shares literally rocketed and mm -hmm. uh, and then started to push on after that t t toward the year highs. Um, j just a note on the on the people running the business. Um, Richard Marsden is the CEO. He is uh, f uh, formerly worked, worked at Pro uh, Profile Therapeutic, uh, Therapeutics, uh, Zimmer, uh, Gene Tech, and also uh, the pharmaceutical giant uh, Roche. Before that, Simon Shaw is the chairman. He's uh, formerly of Gyrus Group and Profile Therapeutics too, and uh, worked for Hambro's earlier in his life. Um, the FD is also ex Profile Therapeutics, John Ward, uh, Rapid Deployment Group, and also worked for PwC in the early days. And of course, the founder of the group, along with a, uh, uh, is a Professor Stephen Holgate, uh, uh, Professor Stephen Holgate, CBE. And you can Google him or go to the Synergium website and find out about Professor Stephen Holgate. Uh, um, it, it, there's, a, there's a very impressive board uh, behind this and uh, a, a number of key advisors that uh, are working with them to take the business forward. So, um, so to take this forward, um, the company announced um, uh, in September that um, uh, the, they signed a, a managed access program with Clinogen to um, develop an inhaler uh, or to, to, to further develop an inhaler version of the IFN beta to treat hospitalized COVID patients. Um, and at the same time announced uh, an interim loss of 5 million, um, although uh, post the raise, of course, they had some 11 million in the bank. Um, 
the shares, of course, have come back uh, um, gradually during the year, and of course, along with, uh, as we were saying at uh, at the outset, uh, Mark, um, the, the 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 shares uh, fell sharply on the announcement from Pfizer, mm-hmm. but have recovered. Um, nonetheless, October the fourteenth, uh, the group announced a placing to raise eighty million and an open offer to raise a further seven million mm. at, at one pound seventy five p to fund phase three phase three trials in nine hundred COVID patients um, to, and to ramp up production to. Uh, so they they could administer um, treatments uh, for a hundred thousand plus cases per month uh, starting next year. Um, so and they've, really, they've announced what a placing at one seven five. Uh, that's right. Well, well, this was announced in October, and, and the placing was uh, the, the placing was um, was very successful. Uh, that they okay. raised the money, so they're now fully funded uh, for phase three trials uh, for nine hundred COVID patients, um, and of course to ramp up production. So, so that uh, from twenty twenty one, they'll be able to treat over a hundred thousand patients per month. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and of course, you know that that uh, that's going to be uh, you know a very real step forward in the battle uh, um, against COVID. And of course, so it, you know th- it, this is treating patients who are at, at the critical stage. Now, now, of course, it may well be that uh, as a result of having a pre-existing uh, respiratory condition, a lot of patients find that they that they have to, um, uh, that that they maybe have um, caught the COVID virus as well. Mm. And of course, it's compounded. So. So Synergen's treatment will, of course, um, alleviate some of the worst symptoms of the respiratory condition, condition that they face. But, of course, now it will also go to fight the COVID virus, too. So okay. Synergen, I think, have, have made huge steps forward. And, um, and you know, going back to the point I made at the start, you know, this this is a long battle. You know, we, we, we the vaccines come in. That's great. Um, you know, yeah, people can be vaccinated. But, of course, people will still catch it. People, um, they will still battle it. And this is something that's used at the chronic stage where patients can be treated and uh, mm. and you know as the data has already proved from the trial patients will be saved mm. and it's it's come off the year highs hasn't it quite uh, quite a lot so could be a good opportunity to uh, to jump in <laughs> Well, I think so. I mean, that they've raised 80, 87 million, you know, so, so yeah. they're, they're fully funded uh, phase three trials. And, uh, you know, they're now able, they will now be able to treat um, 100,000 patients uh, per month starting starting next year. And, and of course, you know, this isn't going to just be for a few months and then everyone's treated and fine. This will this will go on. So so it's, it's highly likely, I think, once the phase three trials are, are successful, mm. that... Uh, that this will be this will be rolled out and there will be increased demand for it. So I I I think you're right. I think this is a very good time to get into Synergen. And I I did actually see Richard Marsden present at an event uh, a couple of years ago, and I was very impressed with uh, with uh, with with the guy himself mm-hmm. and just the just the the uh, the the way he spoke about the company. So okay. um, I I think there's a good team there as well. And, and you know when you're looking at uh, an investable proposition, you have to take all those things into account. But the, there's a very good website. Go and look at the website, and also go and read up about the board too. It's uh, it's very much like a who's who of the uh, the biotech and and pharmaceutical uh, industry. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay. So we then come to Omega Diagnostics. Mm-hmm. Um, now we see that ticker going around ODX. Yes, so ODX and and again, you know, the, the shares of uh, Omega Diagnostics have, have had, had an amazing year too. Um, but uh, again, you know, as as with all of these companies, uh, the 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 initial drive for the company was uh, was in in a different area. But mm. uh, then they took a close look at the technology and, of course, realised it could be adapted. So. Uh, Omega Diagnostics is currently worth around 100 million market cap. Shares trading about 55, 56p. They've traded as high as one pound 13 and as low as six, uh, six and a half p on the year. And the if you look at the website, you'll find that they're, they're, the core focus of the group is on allergies, food intolerance, and infection, infectious diseases. And their primary offering is Visitect, um, which is a CD4. That's a molecular. Uh, um, uh, 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 a treatment uh, uh, derived from uh, the patient's immune system, and uh, mm-hmm. the the uh, treatment detects um, a patient's immune and clinical status, um, and also identifies those at risk of opportunistic infection, and also for those with HIV. Um, this is this is basically an instant 
an instant blood test. So it's a, it's a finger prick and um, they, it's, it's called a lateral flow, flow test. And uh, basically that test will tell you in 10 minutes uh, mm-hmm. what the condition is, what treatment is required and so on. So um, so it, it, it's very quick. It's, it's a rapid test and uh, it's already been approved by the Nigerian Ministry of Health to, for, 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 to, to treat those with, with HIV and uh, or, or to, to, to work with patients to identify those with HIV. HIV and, and other diseases. So it's, a, so it's a prick test that that gives you HIV test results very quickly. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Ten minutes. So so, so that's it. Literally, prick on the finger, and and that's it, and uh, and away you go. Um, it's uh, uh, so so again. Visitect was uh, with the technology was developed and evolved to treat COVID nineteen. Um, and uh, to, b- b- before I get into the COVID nineteen element, there, there's also uh, the uh, company also has uh, um, the ELISA treatment, uh, which is short for enzyme-linked immune uh, sorbent assay. Um, and the the ELISA treatment detects antibi- antibodies in the human uh, in the human serum uh, for up to 59 to 60 common foods. And again, uh, you, you get the results there, back there uh, within about 40 minutes. So, mm-hmm. so again, food intolerance issues, allergies. It, it's a very quick way to tell if a person is allergic uh, to to any form of food. You know, milk intolerance, uh, 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 peanuts, all the rest of it. We you know we hear all we hear about so many different conditions nowadays um so uh the the, the, there is a global distribution agreement in place with Immunodiagnostic Systems (IDS), which is a, which is of course a, a listed uh, company in its own right. So, so, so that again, those are the core businesses. So, so going back to COVID nineteen, it was decided that uh, the Visitech technology uh, would be applicable. Uh, you know, given that it already achieved the achieved gold standard and had been approved by Nigeria Ministry of Health, it was. Uh, uh, a, a, a memorandum of, of understanding was announced in April to form a rapid test consortium with Oxford University and Abingdon Health um, and uh, two other companies, BBI Solutions and Seeker Healthcare. Uh, so this uh, RTC Rapid Test Consortium has uh, has worked and developed through a year, through the year. Abingdon Health has been key in this. Um, separately, uh, separately, uh, uh, the company announced an agreement later in April uh, with a company called MoLogic to provide manufacturing. Uh, uh, manufacturing resources and facilities mm. for the Mologic COVID-19 ELISA test, which was CE marked on April 27th. So, so again, um, the the technology developed by Omega Diagnostics, it was realised that the ELISA system, as well as the CD Visitech CD4 uh, uh, system, uh, could have use and in, in helping to detect and uh, and identify uh, COVID cases. April 28th. Um, uh, a, a supply agreement was announced with Clinton Health uh, to supply um, up to a maximum of 500,000 units of Visitec CD4. Um, and on the back of that, uh, in June, the company announced it raised 11 million at an oversubscribed placing of, uh, of 40 pence. Um, again, just a word on the board. Uh, the CEO is, is Colin King. Uh, he's um, he joined, uh, um, uh, I think it was about 2013, 2014, as he, he joins the chief chief um, operations officer and was promoted to CEO uh, uh, subsequently, formerly from Axis Shield. Um, the chairman is a guy called Bill Rhodes. Um, he's formerly uh, formerly of Beckton Dickinson and Co. Worked for BD Sciences and also Pfizer in the past. Held senior positions there. Um, Kieran Harbison, the FD, has been responsible for raising some $85 million in VC funding over the last 18 months. Um, and commercial director Jag Grohl um, uh, is also formerly from formerly former NHS and has previously worked for Beckman's and also Circo Health um, in, in uh, earlier in his life. So again, a very a very uh, sound professional team to 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 develop and um, and uh, and uh, and build the Visitect and Elisa Elisa models mm-hmm. so july 14th they announced full year results um uh, life for life revenues are up to just under 10 million uh um, a loss of 7 million from um, um uh, and that was an increased loss from previously um the uh, the group also said it was 
it was stopping work work on the allergy developments arm of the business to focus on the COVID on ramping up the COVID test uh, COVID rapid test mm-hmm. um, and to expand the Visitect uh, production lines. Uh, landmark on July the thirtieth, uh, C mark of COVID nineteen lateral flow antibody test. So that's the finger prick test um, received a C mark. And on August twenty first, the World World Health Organization approved Visitec CD four uh, uh, for for uh, for identifying advanced diseases as the only available handheld lateral flow point of care test. Um, okay. So. You know, th- this is significant. You know, this is this is this is a, a test that's, that's being used all over the world. Um, so we we move on from there. Um, the UK government uh, on October the sixth um, announced orders for um, one million rapid test consortium. That's the rapid test consortium put together with Abingdon Health, um, uh, Oxford University, and others. Um, and uh, uh, the, the most recent update from the group is a trading update. Uh, in October um, for the for the half year, uh, which recorded uh, turnover of just three million, but of course this is this these numbers are before the impact of the of the orders for the for the tests and um, and the other developments have been have been factored in. So um, the group said it had seven million cash uh, on the twentieth of August, and it expects a very strong second half. Okay. Quote unquote. So so again. Um, the, the shares have come back, uh, um, come back uh, a long way from the year highs of, of one pound thirteen, trading at fifty five p at the moment. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, this test, the, the lateral flow test, the finger prick test, has been uh, is in use now all over the world. And I think uh, again, there's this is it, it, this isn't something that's going to be solved um, mm-hmm. at, at the stroke of a pen. You know, this is this is this is a, a test that will have. Multiple uses, not just for COVID going forward, but uh, I think there's a great future here for omega, omega diagnostics. It's uh, you know pr- probably you could look at look at COVID and say that it's hugely helped the business take those steps forward because the government needed mm. a rapid test like this. It's now got it, um, and of course once you've got government approval, it's very easy then to to replicate that in other countries throughout the world. So yeah, yeah I, I think again there's a there's a real really strong recovery opportunity here for Omega um, going forward into 2021. And is it Amiga's finger prick test that, that, that's being used is, or is it part of this consortium that you mentioned? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It, it, the, the finger prick test was developed, well the, well the technology was already there but mm. um, the, the cons- it, they work with the consortium to because obviously when you're developing anything like this, you know, historically uh, to get it through the various stages takes mm. an awful long time. But Working with the consortium, they were able to ramp up the production, uh, okay. jump through the regulatory hoops, and actually get it to market much earlier than they would otherwise have done. So the consortium, working with working with that consortium of Oxford University, Abington Health, BBI Solutions, and Sega Healthcare, they've been able to bring it to market. You know, in in a fraction of the time of the time that it would normally have taken. Right. So it is. It, so it is out there now, being sold. It is. That's right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm surprised. Um, yeah, that it's that the chair part hasn't responded really to that. Well, I, well, I, I think it has. I, I think the you know the um, the, the C mark in, in in July. The uh, you know if you look at the uh, the jump up in the shares uh, in the share price mm-hmm. uh, into August and September, uh, approval from the World Health Organization um, and the the subsequent developments, um, and then of course we've seen the share price come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Again, you know, there's an old saying in the market: it's better to travel than to arrive. So, of course, once the news starts coming in, mm. uh, a lot of investors that got in earlier on will, will take their money off the table. So, um, yeah. so the share, the, the share price will come back. So, so I, I think now, you know, we're, we're seeing a period of consolidation. The mm. companies raised the money. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it, it raised money to fund this after this point. And of course, now it's all about production, getting those out into the marketplace and growing the market that those finger prick tests are being sold into. Yeah, as you say, they're going to be needed, aren't they? Regardless, even if, if um, with the vaccine, which is possibly, you know, encouraged the, the perhaps the recent decline as well. Um, I didn't realise yeah. they were that advanced in it, um, actually. I, I, I always see it going around on Twitter, but I didn't realise that they actually had a, a working product that was, that was actually being sold to, to governments. Um, 
I mean, that's you know, if that's not a big tick in the box, I don't know what is. Well, that's right. Yeah, I, I mean, the, you know, UK government uh, last month ordered uh, one million rapid test consortium t- uh, tests. So you know that that it's it's out there. It's been ordered. You mm, know, okay. there's a they that they've reached uh, that they've they've uh, if you like uh, now achieved commercial verification of the uh, of of the test. So yeah, exactly. you know, it's huge. Uh, you know, the, the test was working to identify HIV and other conditions in mm. other countries, but uh, but yeah, it's if you consider the you know such a short period of time really to develop that test to mm. for for covid that's uh, it's an astonishing yeah. step forward and uh, but but of course this is being replicated with other pharma companies at various stages you know to to find a vaccine that works against covid you know pfizer have you know it was a miracle and of course moderna as well and uh, we're going to see others as well mm. i'm sure mm-hmm. it's a good time for farmers i mean we always come back to the same point don't we where they were in something but the covid is given them a chance to pivot temporarily even, or, or permanently um, which has brought funds in money in, and then they can that only better the, the bigger picture of the of the original sort of research or product they were developing oh yeah yeah very, very much so mm. and, and off the back of that i mean we've, we spoke about destiny farm recently and of course that they're, they're in the same position mm-hmm. they've they, they've they've now they, they've now sort of uh, raised funds to and, and also acquired that they've also acquired another uh, uh Another um, uh, uh, phase three trial for C. difficile, which is a, a hospital superbug. But I, I, you know, I'm I'm uh, I, I've taken a left turn. There. I'm not going to talk about Destiny Farm. <laughs> but, but 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 this is happening. You know, as a result of the, the work that's been done on COVID yeah. and the awareness they've generated, the the subsequent increase in the valuation of the company and the improved ability to to raise funds and attract new investors. Um, it, it's it's it's. The net effect is that uh, the, the the process of developing the the core in house drugs mm-hmm. has been has been uh, has been fast tracked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Okay, well we've got two more to cover. So is it open orphan next? Open orphan open it is. Orphan. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, of, of course, we have spoken about uh, Open Orphan before, mm-hmm. but um, Open Orphan is a uh, they're a they're a, 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 a contract research organisation um, and. Uh, We've heard all about, uh, of course, the the uh, the Queen the uh, quarantine centre at Queen Mary's where COVID trials have been conducted, mm-hmm. but um, Open Orphan has many many strings to its bow, um, and it's had it's had a, an incredibly uh, eventful year, both as a corporate entity and, of course, in in terms of, of the work it's it's been undertaken. Um, so. Uh, in the summer of 2019, um, there was a reverse takeover of Venn Life Sciences, and of course, Venn Life Sciences are the group that uh, uh, undertake chemistry manufacturing and controls for uh, drug development. Um, at the start of this year, uh, the company merged with HVivo, and uh, HVivo, of course, own and operate the quarantine center in East London, which is the mm-hmm. largest quarantine center in Northern Europe. Um, so, Open Orphan. Uh, basically generates uh, its cash from HVIVA about 15 million per annum uh, at the last uh, at last reckoning, um, and uh, of course uh, Venn Life Sciences have contracts uh, contract research uh, 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 contracts with companies like Ibsen Pharma, Pfizer, and so on. Um, companies. Uh, and also companies pay to promote their products via uh, Open Orphan's virtual rep service uh, where where they can reach um, many thousands of uh, key decision makers across different companies. Um, and Open Orphan has, has developed a genomic database uh, where patient data, uh, uh, rare disease patient data, is worth up to £3,000 per patient. So that's commercially available, mm-hmm. of course, too. Um, so, but uh, the the key developments for the group this year have, um, of course, been with the with the COVID trials. Um, the it, it, the company announced uh, earlier this year a government contract that's going to be worth probably up to 30 million uh, to conduct trial ch- uh, uh, challenge studies, human challenge studies, and these are human challenge studies are where <coughs> are where um, agents are taken and um, drugs and vaccines are tested against uh, are tested against the, uh, the 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 human serum, if you like, uh, to look for reactions, to look for bad reactions, good reactions, and and uh, basically provide a platform on which to develop vaccines and uh, ways to fight disease. Um, 
the company, uh, uh, the, the the government contract win was a real milestone for the group. I mean, if we look at the the share price uh, for the uh, or the share price performance for the year, mm-hmm. shares are trading back in uh, back in March, April this year at about four and a half p. Hit a high of uh, thirty one pence in uh, in uh, in in September uh, October time, um, and have basically stayed close to or near there since and unlike the other pharmaceutical companies or, or the other companies we talked about this morning uh didn't fall off a cliff when it came to the announcement from mm-hmm. uh from pfizer and from of course from moderna um and the reason is of course that uh that these companies are that these are the companies that use the facilities provided by open orphan to test and uh and and and, and evaluate their the, the drugs that they're that they're that they're developing so um so so the 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 company going forward has a a portfolio of some eight viral challenge studies underway and uh these uh, these are with flu with uh, we spoke about synergia and of course with uh, respiratory single virus rsv they've got some um, rsv tests asthma tests uh uh, COPD as well, again, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Synergen and a coronavirus challenge study models, all taking place at the at the um, at the the, the quarantine centre and uh, the various other laboratories uh, around the world. So, um, so the the effectively the merger with H Fever has created a, a full pharmaceutical services company. So, uh, so there are services provided to to the the companies that are developing cures and developing uh, tests at at at, a, at every every step of the way. Um, the, uh, the word on the board: the uh, the company was um, uh, founded and is is really driven by Cuddle Friel, who is the executive chairman, and uh, his his um, he's he's personally invested to to uh, and, and was. Um, and has provided an awful lot of the the funds for the group uh, at the various fundraisers that the the company has uh, has undertaken through the year. Um, the, the company is is uh, has something like 14 15 million cash uh, in the bank at the moment and uh, uh cal has projected that the group will uh in this quarter in this current quarter in quarter 4 they will be profitable and i think we we undertook this uh this uh this little uh, test in the last um, the, the last time we spoke about uh, we spoke about uh, Open Orphan, but um, uh, just looking at the relative valuation, uh, uh, Open Orphan now trades on a valuation of of 163 million sterling. Um, in one of the uh, in the COVID clear test that uh, it's developed with a company called Quotient. Um, uh, Quotient, of course, are a Nasdaq listed company, and we've spoken before about Nasdaq listed companies um, achieving a much higher valuation than their UK contemporaries. Um, uh, Quotient uh, has a valuation on Nasdaq of some six hundred sixty-five million dollars, um, and its full year revenues were thirty-one million dollars last time. It was loss-making last time. Um, and uh, if you look at the the numbers that uh, were put out the last uh, half year by Open Orphan, I think uh, we're going to be on target to produce a very similar set of numbers. But if the company hits profitability in quarter four, of course, it's going to it's going to put a, a different slant on things. So, so I, I think, and I still believe today that Open Orphan is fundamentally undervalued when compared to its uh, Nasdaq listed counterparts. Mm-hmm. Um, so. As 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 the company's gone forward, of course we've we've uh, we've 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 we, we've heard all about the 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 COVID tests uh, that are taking place at the at the the, the quarantine centre. Those were very feature, featured very heavily in the UK press uh, over the summer and, and throughout recent months. Um, but uh, but uh, the the company continues to win contracts with leading pharm- leading pharmaceutical companies. October thirtieth, Van Life announced a new extended two year contract uh, with a tier one German pharmaceutical group. November the fifth, uh, HVivo announced a new two and a half million influenza challenge study contract. Um, and yesterday, uh, Open Orphan announced a that's a th- that's Thursday the nineteenth uh, of of, uh, of November. Uh, Open Orphan announced a collaboration with. Uh, uh, Hickvac, who are developers of human infection challenge studies, and the Wellcome Trust, which of course is well known to generate regulatory guidelines to uh, for manufacture of human challenge agents. 
Um, and this is relevant because earlier in the year, Open Orphan announced the um, the acquisition of a company called Chim Agent, which is a company that specifically develops these challenge agents uh, in order to conduct uh, the studies and provide the contract research, research services to the different pharmaceutical groups. Mm-hmm. So um, they're now being asked to generate regulatory guidelines for the manufacture of these agents going forward, which is, you know, it's huge recognition of the, the, mm-hmm. the work that Open Orphan have already achieved and the the status that, that they now acquired within the pharmaceutical the and the biotechnology uh, industry mm-hmm. so um so yeah so i i think we've seen some consolidation in the share price in open orphan um but uh, i i believe that the group is is worth it is still fundamentally undervalued as as, as we see it now and what i like about cal frail is that uh, he's He's delivered every step of the way. He's uh, the, the the um he said he said at the last uh, the, the last set of numbers that the group were on pro- on on track for profitability in quarter four 2020. Mm-hmm. And I think if he if he achieves that and and reports that when the company reports the next set of numbers, then that's going to be a springboard to take the group onto the next level. Sounds pretty steady to me. Steady <laughs> steady company. It is, yeah, and the good thing is, you know, where where you know where a lot of companies are, uh, or acquire the majority, or in the majority of their revenues from one particular sector, mm. Open Orphan is literally contracted with mm. most of the leading pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies, and and of course it's uh, it, the we we have the human challenge studies, we have the the contracts with the the, the giant pharma companies to provide chemistry and 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 other uh, and other materials. Um, so it's it's got diversity, it's got a it's got a very broad spread of revenue generation potential, and um, mm. uh, and and you know the. I think from a scalability angle, I think uh, Open Orphan is uh, eminently more scalable than many of the companies that we've talked about. Mm. And it sounds like it's 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 not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. It, 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 it's it's as I say, pretty steady and uh, only going to grow, hopefully. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you know that, that's what that's where the company is at, and and I think uh, again, go to the website. There are lots of interviews mm-hmm. with, interviews with Garfield and the team there. But um, yeah, a very distinguished team of people working there too. Good. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you, Alan. So we've got one more. It's, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. You haven't told me much about it, so I'm I'm, I'm keen to uh, to hear. Okay, so uh, as I said at the start, I, I'm going to take. Uh, we're going to do a, a separate research uh, um, uh, mm-hmm. research session on Venture Life Group. So I'm not going to go into all the details of what the company do. So mm-hmm. suffice to say, the shares of Venture Life company company is currently worth 88 million. Uh, shares are trading at a year low of 22p, and of course that's in February. Uh, year high of uh, one pound 17, and they currently as we. Talk, I think they traded about 105p. So had a very strong year. Um, and again, um, they have a the, the company provides a broad range of self-care products. And these, of course, are products for um, such diverse uh, uh, issues, uh, or, or such diverse uh, treatments as um, uh, cosmetics, um, uh, 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 mouthwash. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, fungal nail conditions, um, uh, hand sanitizers. Uh, I mean, there's a whole a whole raft of products w- which I'll go into in detail when we when we talk next about it. But mm-hmm. um, uh, significantly, the uh, the group have a manufacturing facility in uh, Milan, in northern Italy, and of course that was right in the centre of the of the COVID crisis yeah. in Italy. Um, Throughout the the time, it was able to maintain full operational capacity during lockdown and was not affected at all uh, by the restrictions. So, so that's that that that's a you know a big tick mm-hmm. in the box for the company. Um, they have a a UK offices in uh, in Berkshire. They have uh, offices in the Netherlands now, and that follows uh, um, an acquisition of a company called PharmaSource, which was uh, last year. Um, and the company uh, uh, at, at its interims and. September announced uh, that it had six and a half million, uh, six and a half million cash at the bank um, after the after the Pharma Source acquisition. So this is a cash rich company, and mm-hmm. it was making the acquisitions from the war chest that it's built through through profitable trading. 
Um, but what has caught everyone's imagination this week, uh, of course, is back in the summer, the company announced uh, it was undertaking an in vitro trial um, with Cardiff University to look at the effect of mouthwash on COVID-19. Mm-hmm. And of course, in vitro, it's, it, it's a lab-based trial, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's within lab conditions. Monday this week, they announced that um, uh, the, uh, I should just say that uh, VentureLife um, has its own brand mouthwatch, which is uh, Dental, uh, D-E-N-T-Y-L. Um, and on Monday, the group announced that uh, the um, that they had established in the study that uh, a CPC-based mouthwash, and of course, CPC is an element within uh, 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 most leading mouthwashes, um, but uh, in particular in dental, CPC mouthwash eradicates SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 virus, completely within 30 seconds mm. so um so of course that was that really caught the imagination of of uh, of the, uh, the the national press um and and indeed uh, i i spoke to sharon collins who is the group cco the group chief commercial officer on monday and sharon was the one person who set the trial up with cardiff uni and she she uh, she go, she gave us a, a, an in-depth uh, description of the trial what had taken place and what the what the implications were going forward um uh, full trial results will be published uh, um, in early t- uh, 2021 but you know hugely significant a big step forward um in the fight against covid and of course um uh, we're looking at companies uh, working on various ways of making the human body immune mm. but of course this is uh, this is one of the simplest ways to do it and <laughs> certainly since that interview uh, which is which has uh, been uh, replayed many many times and uh, has been circulated by by uh, many people including the journalists that that uh, wrote the articles about uh, uh, venture life and dental mouthwash on Monday. Uh, since that time, I've been inundated with pictures on WhatsApp of people standing there with pints of beer, a glass of wine, and a bottle of dental mouthwash. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I think suffice to say, it's been taken very seriously. But it, actually, it's a it's a, it's a great step forward. And uh, you know, often the simplest solutions are right in front of you. And I think uh, in the case of in, in this case, there's a very a very easy way to make sure that um, if you're if you're out and about, you you know you get some mouthwash when you come back and have a gargle, and uh, boom, you've killed the virus if it's there. If it's there, yeah, maybe that'll be the standard thing we take with us down the pub. Then, like you say, you know, you have a, 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 <laughs> a bottle of mouthwash. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's generating all sorts of images of uh, dental on draft and everything else. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a pint of dental with my pint of Guinness. But yeah, it, it, it's a but 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 I, I think the great thing is you know uh, we're 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 hearing about new new innovative ways to yes, to beat the yeah. virus and and to keep ourselves safe. And and this is such an obvious way to do it and uh, and uh, it's it's great that they've undertaken this test so uh, but, but of course yeah as i said i'm going to go into uh, detail on venture life next time because there, there's just i think again this company's got such a a broad range of of, of products that it sells directly and through agents mm-hmm. um, they've got a very broad and diverse revenue stream which uh, from an investment standpoint is that's 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 music to my ears yeah well i guess are we going to be speaking on this in the next podcast then uh yes yeah that, that that's yeah that, in more that detail the, yeah that, that was the idea yeah that's it we will yeah okay well that's great we've covered four companies there and we're nearly at 45 minutes so it's quite a long one so we probably best leave it there um but yeah that's covid part two still very much uh some money to be made in in, in this sector um but yeah thank you very much thank you mark thank you for listening to this stockbox interview For more information, interviews and videos, visit our website at stockboxmedia.com or give us a follow on Twitter by searching at stockboxmedia. 